On this episode three of our Manbulance series, I can't edit the footage fast enough to keep up with all the work getting done. First, the internal rear heat and AC was properly disconnected from the 7.3 liter power stroke under the hood AC and cooling system. The battery box was chopped up to make way for the new shower pan, and MacGyver did it again as he put together a drop down bed that has usable storage and seating. It also has magnetic locks that you can turn on and off with an old camera. What? Plus, a large portion of the electrical system has been mocked up. Don't be lame. Stick around for all the action on this episode three of the Mambulance. That's the anal fuse, it says? Yeah, anal fuse. So the ambulance is back from the radiator slash AC shop, and they went through and disconnected where this backside AC, where the shower and the whole bathroom toilet combo is gonna go, connects to the compressor outside underneath the hood. So William is currently underneath the ambulance and he is gonna go under there and start cutting the hoses and yank that turd out of there. Hey, William, cut it out. Not a Dave Coulier fan? He's not a Dave Coulier fan. He's laying on the wet ground, not laughing with joy. So we're hoping this free online was disconnected properly. These are some of the hoses that were cut out. Some were for coolant, likely for the heat. The coolant was coming off the head, running through here, so to blow heat in there and the AC. So we're underneath the power stroke right now, and these are two coolant lines that you're looking at right here. And they would come over here and loop around and feed the heater that was on the inside. And so all the radiator shop did was took and whoop, looped it on there and then purged the air out of the system. We were worried that by the sight of all this coolant that wasn't done, it would be puking out a lot more than that. That's every residual part that's in these hoses are hanging down right here. And one other way to test it is fire this thing up and if coolant goes everywhere, we know it's not right, but it, I'm, I think it's good. So the shower pan is supposed to go to where his finger is at and this under here houses the batteries. So unless he can cut six to eight inches out of that, drop it and make it flat, he's gonna have to return the shower pan. Right here was that old air conditioning unit and what William had to do is you can see the out exterior box down here. This aluminum box was protruding up. So we actually had to take and cut that back so that the shower pan is actually gonna fit in here. So that's cut down and there was actually a ground here that was up, you know, right about where my finger is, a couple four inches, six inches from where it's at and that had been relocated down. There is the shower pan installed. That's beautiful. Ooh, where's that grate? Put that fancy grate on. Oh, that's nice. So there'll be a wall about right there, going all the way up. Gotcha. And on the inside will be basically, yeah, about right there in line with that. There'll be the toilet back here. There'll be a little bit of a divider comes up to about here, but this will all be storage above the toilet. And there'll be a shower door right here that goes all the way to the wall that seals it off. Cool. This is the part of the bench. Everything's kind of pocket jig together here. So this will be a bench here and all of this is going right along here. And so then that bed will fold out like that. So if you're thinking about doing this, this board back here represents the back wall and this is a hinge. So the bed frame is going to be five and a half inches thick and then when it folds up this back hits the wall the last part of the frame will go from five and a half all the way around and i'll trickle this down to four and a half or four inches the supporting frame that's in here will be four inches so when it goes down in here it will clear the back wall so the, the bottom of the bed is going to be tapered even though the mattress will be above it Ooh, look at that Oh, that's fancy. That's beautiful, man. How, those spring hinges are working good too, huh? And they're not even just set. Just the one. Just the one's helping, ain't it? Yeah, a little bit. Wow, look at the clearance we have. 
Oh, talk about clearance, Clarence. Ooh, that's spicy. Wow, it was like an ambulance was designed for this bed. And this will extend out a little further with like a slat bed and have a cushion on here. So you'll be able to sit on here, probably about a four inch cushion. Actually, it'll be up here. But dang, that feels awfully low. It'll be up here. These will be cubbies underneath. So the cushion will be up here. You'll take the cushion off and fold down the bed. So that's an 80 by 60 frame. A few moments later. Here we are at the ambulance project and we're gonna show you where he is at thus far. So he's gonna turn on the vehicle because the bed is held in with a magnetic lock. So this is the bench for sitting while hanging out in the camper or what have you. It's a little shallow. Once we get cushions on it, it'll be more shallow. So what I decided to do is I've made these drawers and they'll have holes on them and everything. These will slide out, and these aren't installed yet, but these will be on piano hinges. They'll fold up underneath the cushion when you're not using them, and then they'll fold down on top of these drawers and create a wider seating area. All three of them will have a cushion. All three of them will have a shallow cushion and a deep cushion, so they'll all be able to extend out or stay in. Man, you could almost sleep just on that, like a... Yeah, you could. Once the cushion's on it and everything, uh... So okay. these will be on piano hinges, like I said. They'll be able to fold in, put the cushion, the shallow cushion back on it, put the drawers in, fold these up, put these in. Now you've got full walkway in here and still a small seating area. You can't even tell there's a drawer there. I mean, there's a drawer literally right here. This is crazy, so it's, it's just nuts. Yeah, I tried to blend it in with the, and I'm gonna do a little adjusting and stuff like that, but I tried to blend it in with the ship lap as much as possible That's awesome. to where you can't see it. Being this is all gonna be painted and paint great, I will, uh, I'll fill these edges and paint them. Yeah, this, this, I think this is gonna be, wow, effortlessly that just folds right down. So it'll be some supports on it that will hold it up and everything like that. It's a full, or a, it's a queen size bed and when it's up in the up position you can't even tell it's there the hinges are actually springs uh spring loaded so it actually helps as you can see here it's kind of like at that oh that one's on that side's locked gotcha right, that okay now. so now this will not move it has 120 pounds magnet a magnetic lock on each corner you can't pull this down so now it's released again and we will pull it down so you can see the magnetic locks. Floating gravity right here. It just floats down. So that'll all be filled and caulked and painted and all that stuff. But that is a, the wiring trough. I'll be able to access that and get into it if I need to run wire or troubleshoot something. And we'll make that all blend in and look pretty. So Yeah, so there's the magnetic locks. One right there, there. And then on this side, there's just um, a big old hunk of metal. Wow, and it's like suction tight in there. There will be a floating shelf on this wall. It'll come out approximately six inches. And I'll somehow incorporate my leg support system into that shelf. Um, on the shelf, we'll have decorative items, you know, a plant, you know, a little statue. Um, I'm gonna put a camera up there. And those items are gonna be glued down, screwed down, permanent to where they don't fall off the shelf and you don't have to remove them. I like photography and camera equipment and stuff like that. I'm gonna mount an old <coughs> Pentex K1000, it's non-operable, up on the shelf and routed into the shelf will be a power wire that goes to the magnetic locks. I've added a latching button on the back of this that's for 12 volts. And when you push the button, it'll release the locks you can grab the shelf, pull the bed down, and when you want to put the back power back onto the locks, you can push the button, add power back to them, or put the bed back up. That's awesome. And it'll be permanently mounted on there as a decoration. Admiring how well, you know, William's gone through and filled all the holes, which he's painting, so it doesn't really matter. But what you're going to do with this back panel, do you want to explain that? Um, in the ambulance originally, they had a lot of what they call, I call them button screw heads. This, with a screw going through it, and you'll see the screw head right here, right here, right here, right here, and probably two in the center. So I can remove this panel. I can get to the rear marker lights. 
I can add a backup camera later, you know, or service a backup camera or change it out or whatever. There's a light bar back here. There's some stuff that I wouldn't mind having access to later on if I go ahead and paint this and what have you. I will not know where the screw holes are and I'll have to tear it down. So this is the MPPT. This is what basically regulates the voltage to charge the batteries that will all be down here. Okay. This is the Multi Plus 3000. So it's 3000 watt power inverter charger. It charges the batteries from shore power, alternator, but it's also a pass-through. So if you're on shore power, and you're, which is 30 amps, it will actually separate what you need to run whatever you need inside and continue to charge the batteries, or it will take from shore power and the batteries and bring it up to 50 amps. This is the Orion TR Smart. It basically is the uh, non-insulated DC to DC charger. This basically is what's going to charge off the alternator to charge my batteries when I'm driving. Gotcha. But it's separate from the car batteries or the crank batteries. So I'm not using that when I'm running anything in the, in the living quarters. I'm only using my house batteries. This little guy is the bus bar system for the, for, it's called the Lynx. Basically it's a power distribution bar for everything. It's all fused from this location. So each item, batteries, everything will be fused. Be my AC to DC power distribution box. It basically will have a 50 amp main breaker and I can put other breakers in for other 110 or 120 volt items. And then this is my slots for 15 different DC items running on 12 volt, each with their own fuse. So dumb question, are these the same type of breakers you'd yep. buy at Home Depot? You yep. go buy a Square D or whatever? I'm gonna go buy a Square it? D main breaker and a Square D, you know, single. Or Eaton or whatever, the f what fits in there? Does it yep, have it? I'm using Square D. Square D, okay. So this will be housed here. This lights up and shows you what fuses or whatever. And this will be mounted up here on the wall power coming into it just going to each of my 12 volt items gotcha okay um this is my shunt for the main system this will come right off the batteries to the negative right off the batteries this plugs into it this so, this is it here so you're saying this is your say that more time this is a shunt for it's the, the battery monitoring shunt basically it's um allows it's have bluetooth capabilities so you can look at it here or you can look at it from your phone from the from the Victron app. Wow. So this will have the uh, Victron uh, Bluetooth Multi uh, Plus dongle on it that will allow you to log into that, which communicates with all the other equipment. So basically I can monitor and pull stats from the whole system on my phone. And this is the battery cutoff, so it's just a single on, single off. Wow. It'll come right off the Lynx distributor and then right down to the batteries. Let's see the back of that. 100 amp mega fuse. That'll actually go in the Lynx distributor to link for one of the items. 400 amp mega fuse. This is an anal fuse. This is what goes right off the batteries into the system. That's an anal fuse, it says? Yeah, anal fuse. All right, so we're looking at some of the electrical components where we're going to be crimping some of the thick wire. So these are the hydraulic crimpers. I got them on Amazon. Um, I think they were $49 or something. I'll put the link in one of the videos on YouTube or something. But it comes with different dyes. You know, they're you know easy to remove, stuff like that. They just pop out, pop back in, and they got an on and off release button, so you go on. There you oh, go. So it's like a bottle jack. Yep. Damn. So it's got a hydraulic you know chamber in here and you can crimp the lugs. And there's so all the different dyes. There's inside. all the different dyes that it comes with. Wow. Oh yeah. crap. We've got this four out cable here for positive and negative wow. with these big old lugs. So we'll be crimping these and we'll also be crimping six gauge and two gauge wire to hook up all the components. 